Thank you sincerely, Eddie. Um, I have no idea about economics, but I actually feel like I understand the thing far better now. So thank you for that presentation. And um, I hope you're okay to hang around for some questions later, because I'm sure there will be questions coming in. Um, now, I am delighted to say that we have another economist, Kate Rayworth. Hello, Kate. Can you hear us? Great. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to introduce Kate as a renegade economist, uh, because that's what her website says. Uh, she's focused on making econ economics fit for the 21st century realities. Um, and she's the creator of the Donut of Social and Planetary Boundaries, and she's the co-founder of Donut Economics Action Lab. We did invite Kate to come, and she would have, only that she had to mind the children because her husband, Roman, had to come and give a talk to our citizens' assembly. Um, so I imagine that their conversations are very dynamic and interesting across the kitchen table. Um, but thank you, Kate, for um, for being with us today, um, and, and we're, we really appreciate that. So um, if you can hear us, we're going to give you now a warm welcome to the citizens' assembly. Thank you very much. It's really wonderful to be able to join you this way. Um, and I should just say that Roman and I decided that on this occasion, it would be him that travels. Of course, it is sometimes me. I don't always stay home with the kids, but I'm really thrilled to join you. And I want to share just some of the big ideas from Donut Economics. So it's great that Eddie's just set out some of the really specific details about how Ireland is um, managing its, its fiscal policies. I'm gonna pull right back because I know that economics is pretty overwhelming for a lot of people. And I think the most useful thing I can do today is just provide a few big concepts that I hope help you think and listen and gather everything, the complexity of what you're being uh, provided with, give you some frames to put that into. So I'm going to dive in, just share four big ideas about how I think about the future of the economy. And I'm going to do it like a good ancestor, thinking really big, long term of the future that we want to create. So I'm going to start with the donut. And I offer it to you as a compass for human prosperity in Ireland and in the world. What's happening here? Think of this as a, as, as, a, as a compass for our future and humanity's use of Earth's resources radiating out from the center of that picture. So the big goal that we're trying to achieve with our economies, with our societies, is to leave no one in this hole, leave nobody in the world falling short on the essentials of life. Nobody should lack food, healthcare, housing, education, income, social equity, political voice, make sure no one is left behind below that social foundation. But at the same time, as we use Earth's resources, we know that we start to put pressure on this beautiful, delicately balanced living planet. And so we must not use Earth's resources to the extent that we go over that ecological ceiling. That's where we overshoot the pressure on Earth's life supporting systems. And we start to cause climate breakdown and biodiversity loss and we acidify the oceans and create a hole in the ozone layer. We, we destroy the very systems that make life work on this planet. So leave no one in the hole, don't overshoot Earth's limits. Live in that green donut shaped space in between. That is where people and planet can thrive. And that's the compass that I offer. And I believe this is one compass that really empowers us all to think what kind of economy, what kind of society will be in service to this future, if we can leave one inheritance for our grandchildren and their grandchildren, it will be a world that continues to work like this. Now you'll see that biodiversity loss is one of these life supporting systems. And of course, everything here is profoundly interconnected. So as we seek to provide food and water and energy and housing and healthcare, it puts pressure on many life supporting systems, on the climate, on our use of land and water, fertilizer and all of these have knock-on effects on biodiversity loss so everything is delicately interconnected and the challenge is that on a global scale humanity is way out of balance we know that billions of people worldwide are falling short on the essentials of life in Ireland I know that there are people and you know them and can think of those situations where people 
are falling short on the essentials of life. We all are facing energy crises, food crises, there are housing crises, people living in poverty. So we need to get everybody out of poverty. And we are already massively overshooting our pressure on the planet, including on biodiversity loss. And I know from all the discussions you're having, this too is true in Ireland. So how can your nation, like every nation, find a balance that we've never found before? I mean, this is really a time to transform our economies for the 21st century and create kinds of policies and futures and businesses and agricultural practices and industrial practices that we haven't practiced in the past because the past took us here and we need to turn this story around. So I want to provide these big pictures for how can we begin to think about turning the story around? So how can we do that? I wanna share with you what I think of as the big picture of the economy. It's a diagram, let me talk you through it. Let's remember that the economy, that space in the middle, that's the place where we organize to provision for everything we want and need. Our food and clothing, electronics, our housing, <clears throat> transport, energy. And we do it, yes, through the market, and through the state providing public goods. We do it through household provision of childcare and caring for each other. We do it through the commons coming together as a community. And we use finance in service of that economy. But the economy, it's always remember, is embedded in society. It's a social construct. We invented how we provide these things and it's embedded in political, social, legal, and cultural systems. And as, as Eddie was just describing, it's a social construct. And let's always remember that human society is embedded in the living world and utterly dependent upon it. The living world isn't something outside, uh, on the side of an externality to our world and economy. It, it's everything that we depend upon and survive upon. And we thank goodness for solar energy hitting this planet makes life happen and makes us able to provide. So biodiversity and a thriving biodiversity is the fundamental of the web of life, is the fundamental that makes life work, makes our economies work. We must protect it as a foundation, even though we sometimes see it as an afterthought because it doesn't usually come into our economic conversations, but it underpins everything. So how do we protect the foundations of life? Let's recognize that in every nation, we've inherited systems that are degenerative by design the way we are farming and fishing, the way we are building our cities and heating our homes and traveling, the way we're shopping and creating industries and our lifestyles, everything from the past everywhere has become degenerative by design. We take Earth's materials, we make them into stuff we want, we use it for a while, and then we often throw away and degrade the impacts. And this is what's pushing us over planetary boundaries. And it's been running down the life support systems of our planetary home. We need to turn this around in a way we've never done in every sector so that we are regenerating so that we don't use things up we use them again and again we we return earth's materials to the earth we share and repair and refurbish and recycle materials that aren't organic and don't degrade so this will bring us into the cycles of the living world how will we do this? We don't yet know. We are learning and figuring it out, what it looks like in agriculture, in fisheries, in cities, in industry, and in the way we think we should live our own lives. Here's some ideas from around the world. Regenerative agriculture, an example from France. Rewilding, an example from Scotland. Bringing nature back into the city in New York City of all places. And in Amsterdam, they're committed to creating a circular economy so that materials don't get used up, they're used again and again. And this is an example of a district where all the materials that you can see there are being reused and refurbished and recycled. None of that construction material can be thrown away. Now, these are examples from around the world. And of course, the question for you is, and for your nation, what will regenerative solutions look like in Ireland? That's not for me to say. I'm not close enough to your context to know. But what I do want to share is these frameworks of thinking, how do we move from the degenerative systems we've inherited to creating regenerative systems in their place? So the last idea I want to share is a framework that I hope will serve you throughout the Citizens' Assembly for thinking of all the different powers that the state has. As Eddie was just setting out, the state has fiscal and budgetary powers, but there are many other things that we need the state to do as well. 
So when we think about how can we leave behind degenerative ways? How can we leave behind biodiversity loss? And how can we instead create regenerative future and thriving biodiversity? The state has many powers and I'm going to just talk about them through these five design traits of a place. It's purpose, networks, governance, ownership and finance. And the question is, what can the state and the society do around each one of these? So I'll just give you a few questions to, to really embed the ideas from each one. So the purpose, what is your nation's purpose, its vision for the future in terms of biodiversity? That long vision of being good ancestors, is, is that vision ambitious enough? Is it known and shared across society and will it guide decision-making? So purpose, what are we in service of? What is that vision of getting into that donut, meeting the needs of all within the means of the planet? How will you in articulate that in Ireland? Networks, so relationships, any connections, what kind of relationships need to be created for this to happen? And what can the state do as a convener, bringing people together? What new collaborations are needed around the complex challenges that you're looking at? And there are many powerful existing networks that exist often holding in place the very patterns we need to change, the very old dynamics. How can they be counterbalanced? How can we recognize them and counterbalance them with voices from the future that aren't yet connected, but equally have a claim on shaping that vision? So what about networks and relationships? And of course, having a citizens assembly is a powerful example of a new kind of network, a citizens network. What will be the role of your voice and how, how will it last over time? Let's move to governance. So what kind of regulations are needed? How can they best be enforced and monitored? We, every country has lists of regulations and yet why aren't they in practice? What will it take to get these actually practiced? What will be the metrics of success? How will we know that we're doing better? So governance is all shaped around these issues as well as the, the soft governance of how things actually get done, the culture of decision-making and, and, and putting things into practice going a step deeper ownership so how are things owned the very sources of wealth creation where biodiversity sits who owns and manages rural land in your country and in what interest who owns and develops urban land and urban buildings who owns and operates the major industries and what's each of their roles in transformation how can the state bring them to hold that responsibility for the impacts they're having the industry they have and then lastly, finance. And Eddie was speaking to this. And I want to just ask the big question because finance, we can get very overwhelmed by finance. It's quite intimidating when you're on the outside of it. It seems like it's a set thing that the rest of the world must perform around. But actually, I want to ask the really long question, how can finance itself be designed to support rather than undermine the living world? It should be in service. It's a financial service after all. Finance should be in service to supporting life on this unique and delicately balanced living planet. So what can governments do to harness the annual budget cycle to serve finance, to underpin the living world? How can subsidies and taxes be totally shifted from what they have often done in so many countries funded actually degenerative practices? How can they actually promote regenerative practices? What's the role for public procurement when the government is actually buying and running public services? How can the government itself draw and spend in ways that promote regenerative design? And then of course, a massive question, what's the role of private finance? Now, I've just put a lot of questions in the room. I'm gonna put them together here. And, and I just want to acknowledge that's a lot of questions and none of us knows the answers to all of them. But I know that in your room, you have people with such different experience, whether it's your professional experience, your personal experience, lived experience, or a real interest in different areas of these. And I invite each of you to become a, a steward or a champion of different topics here that you really want to make sure are, are discussed as you go through the process of the assembly and asking yourselves, what still draws us back from the nation's purpose and networks and governance and ownership and finance? What still draws us back into the degenerative ways that are actually meaning we're losing our nation's biodiversity? And what already draws us forward? Because of course there are good things in place everywhere that are already trying to bring about the new trends. As you ask that, say, what can we stop? What can we let go of? 
What is it time to leave behind? And what is it time to start to spread and amplify? How do we change direction so we start to move into the donut rather than pushing ourselves out? Let's recognize that every system is embedded in many other systems. So you've got the nation of Ireland and within it, the counties, within it, the cities and the towns and the villages and the neighborhoods and Ireland embedded in the European Union, embedded in the world. So there, there are bigger systems. None of us is in control. And, and Eddie was talking about the financial markets that are from Europe and the world that really impact us. So we can't control everything, but we can ask if you were to put post-it notes all over this, we can always ask, what can we stop? Because it's within our power, our, our purpose, our networks, our governance, ownership and finance in this nation, in our counties, in our neighborhoods. What can we stop? Because we can. And what can we start? Because we can. And what can we only do when we do it with the rest of the world? And we know that conversations like this one are happening and must be happening more all over the world to start bringing about the much bigger system changes that we need. So let me finish. I've shared with you a vision of a goal for humanity that I hope Ireland sees itself as part of contributing to meet the needs of all people within the means of this living planet. I've shared an idea that the economy is embedded in society, embedded in the living world, utterly dependent upon the living world, and therefore the economy needs to work in ways that work with life. That means we need to move from being degenerative and running down the living world to industries and agriculture and systems and ways of living that are actually regenerative. And that's a massive human journey that we're all learning how to do. We're late in the day to do this and we must learn fast. And so we must think, what are all the ways in which the state and our communities and universities and finance and business and citizens can transform from our purpose, the relationships of networks, how we govern ourselves, how things are owned and how things are financed. What can we stop and what must we now start? Let me stop there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you for sharing those ideas and giving us potential frameworks to consider as we continue to move on um, with this work now as well. So thank you. Um, and Kate, you're happy to, to hang around for a few questions in about a half an hour. Wonderful. I'm delighted. Thank you. Um, so you have um, half an hour now to consider this with your tables. We'll come back to a questions and answers um, at half past 12, and I'm sure there'll be very many interesting ones to ask both Eddie and Kate. So see you at half 12. <laughs>